So right now we're gonna go over a wheel alignment on a vehicle that has larger than stock wheels. It's pretty much the same procedure, um, but it does depend on how you have raised the vehicle. If you have used like an aftermarket steering knuckle or aftermarket control arms, I recommend that you use the specs that go for those components. So we, this, this vehicle does have aftermarket UMI control arms with tall ball joints. So we will use the street performance specs and you can see the camber is different, the caster is different in the toe, but I'm gonna use the factory hunter specs for the toe. And that's what we like to do. So we'll just give you a quick another view of how beautiful this Gen 5 LT1 looks in this car. This is a swap we completed in 2018, it's 2022. And the reason why it's in now is because it had um, factory front suspension, so we changed to all UMI suspension up front, upper and lowers, uh, new inner and outer tie rod ends, new drag link, eyler arm, and uh, we put UMI tie rod adjustment sleeves on it, and QA1 coilover kit, so we have to align the car. And as well, a UMI sway bar, so, so this vehicle needs to be aligned. We we did previously align it once, so you'll see what the specs are gonna be close, but we did make a coilover shock adjustment for ride height, as well as a sway bar adjustment. So after I've driven the vehicle, I just want to double check the alignment, and also it'll give me a chance to shoot a video. So this is where we're at. So I'm gonna raise the vehicle up, push it forward onto the turn plates, get our alignment heads on, and then we'll walk through the procedure with the machine. So we are using a Hunter Hawkeye machine with this style rim clamp. They do make other style clamps, but this is what we have and we have an adapter for other wheels and you just gotta be careful using this clamp, but it's able to be done without any damage to anything. So we will get that set up and move forward. So I'm gonna pause. So, right now we have our car sitting on the alignment rack. We have the alignment heads on. As you can notice, the rear ones are not sitting level like the front ones are. And the reason for that is because this car has a little bit of a squat on it and it will hit the body for when you do the rolling compensation. So like I say, this car has been previously aligned by us here because once we installed all of this new suspension, we got the ride height kind of close and then we drove it and checked it to make sure nothing was rubbing. So, but to do that, first off, we had to get it in alignment so we could drive the car safely. So every time you make a height adjustment, I'm not saying that you have to realign the car because that's what coilovers allow you to do, make height adjustments. But if you change everything on the front of your car, upper and lower control arms, um, coilovers, inner and outer tie rod ends, eye arm, center link sway bar. You will have to do an alignment before you drive the car. I do not recommend you driving the car without aligning it. You really need to align the car. So, the vehicle's on the rack, the tire pressure has been set to where it needs to be set, so now we go inside our alignment machine. So we select our vehicle, so Chevy, Chevelle, it is a 71, so we select that. Now what it wants us to do is a rolling compensation. What that means is that you can see by the animation, these reflectors here have to be calibrated once they're on the car, so there's a compensation for that. So the car sits here, you should have it in neutral already because you should have rolled it onto the turn plates. You do not wanna drive on the turn plates this is your turn plate. You want to roll the vehicle onto the turn plate. So the vehicle should still be in neutral because you rolled it onto the turn plate and you have your wheel, your rear wheels are chalked with wheel chalks. So now you have to do a compensation, which means you will roll the car back, then wait for it to go green, and then roll the car back forward. So I'm gonna try to set this camera up. So you can see that on the screen and you can see how it goes green. Got 
me see. Maybe if we go a little bit further. No, that's not good either. So we'll just stay right here. You can see a lot of the screen like that. So now let's start with the compensation. So when you compensate, you move your wheels, your rear wheel chalk, you roll the car back, it'll go green, and then you hold the vehicle still and wait for it to go back red, and that's when you roll it forward. You see it just went back red, it changed, so you're now rolling it forward. Then you chalk your wheels. Now that part is done. So now, they want you to measure caster, but because we are using custom specs right here, I need to input those custom specs. So for now, we will bypass the caster measurement. the button. Now let's go to show vehicle specs. See where it says show vehicle specifications? We will go there. Now this is what the factory specifications are. But these are what we want to use. We want our camber to be set at one and a half degrees negative on both sides. See camber, one and a half degrees negative. That's not what the factory spec is calling for. So we'll go ahead. So we have changed our camber to one and a half degrees negative. Now our caster is positive five degrees on the driver's side. So let's go to left caster. So left caster. They want a positive five degrees. And now for passenger side caster, they want a positive five and a half degrees. So let's go do that. So we have our right caster. So now we've changed it and we're gonna leave our toe, our toe alone. So now let's go So now we are going to measure caster. So the way we measure caster, we're gonna first get the wheels turned straight ahead. And but before we do that, you see these pins on our turntables? These pins, you pull these out so that the wheel can turn freely on the turntable. Let me just turn our compressor off so it doesn't kick on while we're working. So, we pulled our pins. Now we gotta get the wheels set straight ahead. So I'll set you guys back up here so you can watch.
So we're blocking our rear sensor. So now we have to go in here to measure caster. So we will, this is blank. These measurements are blank because caster is a measurement that is taken by doing um, a actual caster sweep. Hold on, it doesn't seem like our measurements saved. They, huh. So we got this one. So now we're gonna go over here to measure front caster. This, these, these little menus right here let, let you do things. So we will measure front caster. The way you measure caster is you're actually turning the wheel. So we will get inside the vehicle, we will put our brake depressor on, and then first center up the wheel. And then we will turn the wheel left to right until the screen tells us to stop, and then that will give us a caster measurement. We got a brake depressor. Let me grab our remote. So we're turning left, now it's measuring that, now we'll turn right. Now we center it back up. asking us do we want to save these before these 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 new measurements and we are going to click yes we want to save these because we just accurately measured caster so let's go ahead and click yes and this is what we have let's show our bar graph so this is our bar graph our toes pretty good our caster is pretty good and the camber is out. So we wanna bring our camber in, but remember, anytime you change camber, camber will affect caster, and that will also affect toe. So we're, so we're pretty much gonna to have to realign the whole thing again. And the way we do this is with shims. So if you click on this little icon, the machine does all the calculations for you, where normally you would have to do this yourself. It'll, it'll, it will do that for you and it'll let you know what you have to do to bring it within spec. So if I click right here, then you get to adjust with shims right there. It'll bring up this picture. So it's telling you on the left side, the driver's side in the front, they want you to remove 11, 30 seconds of shims. On the rear, they want you to take out 13, well, excuse me, add 13, 30 seconds. Both, both, both of them are add. So you're adding 5 sixteenths on the front right. You're adding 13 to 30 seconds on the rear right. You're adding 13 to 30 seconds on the left right and adding 11 30 seconds on the front right. Now, this is what the shims look like. We got a various amount of shims here that you have to have to be able to align one of these cars with shims. So we'll go okay. They also show you like a little computer animated things where it says Ill illustrate adjustments where to show you how to make the adjustment. So the shims go in there and I'm also gonna show you on the car. So let me lower the car down and then I will show you exactly where the shim, the, the shims go. 
Now I have a mark on my alignment machine as to where it sits. So once I lower it down, I know that it'll come back to the same spot on, on, on those locks. But what you can also do is you can go, I just wanna double check these measurements to make sure that the specs are saved in here correctly, yes. So our specs are what we want. Let's go back. So we can go to bar graphs and then go to make our adjustments, adjust with shims. And what we can do is we can freeze these measurements so we can make it, make them because once we get on there and start making things, the machine is very, very sensitive. So it'll throw it off and think that your numbers will constantly have to be changing. So what you wanna do is freeze the measurements. You click here, you freeze it, and it says measurements are frozen. So that's letting you know that, hey, just change these things and you'll be fine. So that is what we're gonna do. So I'm going to lower the car down, show you exactly where on the car the shims need to be added or removed, and then we'll go forward. So things look different now. We got the car down on the ground. We got some fender covers on it. Now let us show you what we have to do. So this is our upper control arm right there. This is where our upper control arm mounts to the frame of the car. These silver things are shims. See there's some shims back there. Now also because this is an aftermarket control arm, this bar is wider on, on this side than it is on that side. And it's to increase or decrease negative camber. Your instructions for your control arms, if they have that feature, will tell it to you. So that's why it's important that you read your instructions. So what we need to do is add more shims in between the control arm mount and the actual cross for the the crossbar for the control arm to affect camber. But you gotta remember, camber is the way the wheel moves in and out and also adjusts caster too at this point. So according to our frozen measurements, on the driver's side up front, we need to add 11 30 seconds and in the rear, we need to add 13 30 seconds. Now, I hope you know math because you can figure this out and you don't really have to add 11 30 second shims like you can take a look at what's in there do your calculations and go on about your day so we're going to loosen this nut right here right there and back here to allow this control arm to move away from the frame mount so we can stick more shims in there now this boat is supposed to be splined into this mount right here. So you have to be mindful, sometimes these bolts can work loose and this bolt will want to turn, so you have to put a socket on here. That's not the case on this car. We just take our 11 sixteenths, loosen this bolt. It is a locking, a mechanical lock, locking bolt, so it will have resistance on it the entire way you are turning. This should, this nut that's on here should be a locking nut, preferably a mechanical locking nut, not a nylon one because you will suffer some heat getting on it. So it's 11 sixteenths. We will loosen this, add our correct amounts of shims back in here and tighten it back down and go onto our passenger side and do the same thing. Thankfully, this time, we only have to add shims. We don't have to do any subtraction. So that's a real big plus on this one. Um, so you get to do less math because there's no subtracting of shims. Uh, but I did wish you did have to subtract shims because sometimes you will have to do some math because what's in there isn't the same size shim that they're telling you to pull out. But that's a whole nother topic. Um, so let's get started on this and I'll cut you back on right after this is done. So one thing I should have made mention of before, this is, I didn't notice until after we put our, until I was doing the math to put our shims in, you can glance down here. So 
but you see, because our caster was good, you see how in the rear, it asked for the same amount so that we could hopefully keep our caster exactly where it needs to be. So we will unfreeze. And that's what it's saying now. And we will just say, okay, for now. Then, then now what we're gonna do is we're going to do another caster sweep even though this stuff is red, do not be alarmed about this being red. The reason why I'm saying that is because you have to remember, caster is a measurement that is taken when the wheels are turned. So we have to do, a, do another caster sweep and then we'll see where our caster is coming in at. So this is right after doing another caster sweep and I am happy with these measurements. So we wanted to have more positive caster on the passenger side, we do. We were shooting for 5.5, uh, we got 5.1, and we were shooting on the driver side for five, and we got 4.7. So our cross caster is very good. Um, our camber, I'm happy with that as well. We have more positive camber on the passenger side, so if there is a pull, it should pull to the passenger side. You always want the vehicle to pull to the right in the US because that is out of oncoming traffic if it does have a pull. And camber affects pull by the most positive side. So although they're both negative, 0.8 is more positive than 0.9. So as with anything, you always do toe last. So you the the way you do an alignment is caster camber toe so toe is the last toe is the last setting that that you will do and when we do toe using our was this hunter hawkeye we will use wind toe so let me get to wind toe and that is what we will do wait shit uh hold on make additional adjustments. So this is our wind toe. So what you would do is you will start the vehicle up, level the steering wheel on the inside. Once your steering wheel is level, so if you have a logo or something that needs to sit level, you get that centered and level. Then you turn the car off, get out, make sure your brake depressor stand apply. I do not use a steering wheel holder, I don't. Then we come under here and make our adjustments. The way we make adjustments on this car is we have these tie rod, let me see, is there a better one? So we have these tie rod sleeves, we loosen this nut and loosen that nut, and then we turn it and we watch the screen and it gets us in, and then green is go. So I'm gonna set the camera back up for you, and we will do that next. So, I'm gonna hop in the vehicle, start it up, and level our steering wheel. Steering wheel is level. Now we click OK. This is just telling you to do that. Steering wheel level, turn the engine off. It's done. So we have to make this adjustment. I'm going to pause to go get the tools to make this adjustment. Okay, so I have what I believe to be our correct wrenches. Now we will loosen up our jam nuts and start to make our adjustment. <laughs>
Now I'm turning our adjustment sleeve. And you can see that number changing. So we just popped up into zero. We're gonna bring it back. So I'm gonna grab the camera and show you what I'm turning. So this is what I'm turning. I'm turning this sleeve. These jam nuts, this one on the inner is left hand thread, this one on the outer is right hand thread. So you turn this, then you watch your screen, and then you also need to jounce the vehicle, which means move it up or down, so you can get this centered to where it is because this will want to turn too. So you, you can pick up on the sway bar, jounce the vehicle after you make your adjustment and then turn this and then get it locked in on the screen and then you lock your jam nuts down. So that's what we're doing. And you can see how that changed since we just touched that. So that's why I'm saying it's very sensitive. So we'll get that back in spec. Now I'm going to jounce my vehicle. So that's the right side, then you move on to the left. Down to my vehicle.
Now we're going to lock everything down. So, we're all set there. So that's where we're at. Now we'll bring up a full bar graph. And that's where we're at. So we're good there. Um, everything's all set, so we're done. Just like always, after you align it, you should drive the car to just make sure everything's good. So, we have completed our four wheel alignment on this 1971 Chevelle with full custom front suspension. It's got UMI upper and lower control arms with tall ball joints on the upper control arms, QA1 coilovers. Um, New inner and outer tie rod ends, UMI tie rod end adjustment sleeves, 24 inch Rucci wheels, uh, CPP uh, C5 style brakes with their custom spindles, a UMI sway bar with UMI spherical sway bar links. Um, just pretty much your basic uh, streetcar bolt ons. So, Thank you again for checking out White One Auto, and we'll continue to drop as much content as we can. And we thank you for your support, so remember to comment, like, and subscribe, and you guys have a good day. To put out, point out, we did lube all our grease fittings. We just wanted to wait until the end, because I like working around at least amount of grease as possible. So everything is lubed, because I know some internet guy will be like, you didn't lube the bushings! You didn't lube them! But everything's lube, so check us back out again, ladies and gentlemen. White One Auto out, baby!